think we shall just allow one more speaker and then I mean two more speakers and then we shall be wrapping up. Uh yes. Uh comrade, uh yes, Dr. McGinney, please give us your submission at three minutes and then we give our last speaker and then we shall be wrapping up. Thank you. Over to you, Dr. McGinney. Thank you. <laughs> Joe, <laughs> three minutes is an introduction, but uh, thank you. Um, Joe, you know, the, the discussion as it has gone here and as it is going on, it tells you we have not done the right thing because there are so many doubt, doubting Thomases, and you are seeing it. Now, Joe, you know, for me, I almost don't want to discuss this because I'm in the United States. Because normally when you talk to Ugandans, they, t they tell you you are talking. Don't compare us with America. I'm in a hospital that has closed kidney transplant. And the reason why they have closed kidney transplant is because they are saying they cannot sustain the complexity of running a kidney at the expense of the rest of treatment in the hospital, running expensive stuff. It is, a, it's, it's, it's an area of speciality for speciality. But uh, if I put it in the local layman's language, allow me to use my sports background, and I will tell you I am the only trained coach for throws for Uganda. Trained by International Association of Athletics Federation. So when I was trained, uh, I was trained in Nairobi. But uh, a javelin is $1,200. A spear, a spear is $1,200. So that program died. I could, not, I could not coach. I'm just giving you that ordinary example. The Chinese gave us Nambole. You know what Nambole has turned into. Yes, Dr. Frank Herman told us perhaps he has become a professor through studying overseas. Yes, you can come and do advances overseas. <laughs> Joe, you and me and many others recently were given NASA, <laughs> a, 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 a Ugandan who is with the NASA introduced a, a program in Uganda. He gave us scholarships and, 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 and to so many, a hundred scholarships. Joe, if I told you that there are about three or four people completing that course out of the 100 because of electricity, not having internet, I mean, all these small things. So if you are talking about a kidney transplant in an environment which we have been complaining about, and the doctors came here and told us, they came and told us, don't compare, don't, don't, don't lump us with that program in the Middle East. Medicine is justice. If a doctor is not even ready to defend somebody in the Middle East, forget, forget, forget. If a doctor from Uganda can't see that Ugandans have already consented and they are not ready to follow it up and they expect us to, to accept to do organ transplant in Uganda, no wonder every person is suspicious. Now, medicine is governance. Medicine is governance. If I made a statement that as long as Museven is a president of Uganda, then forget that's not medicine because he's the summary of medicine in Uganda. He's the consultant surgeon. He's the consultant physician. He's everything. And medicine is not that way. Medicine is not that way. The United States, the Obamacare, led to voting. Affordable care leads to voting. So if we are going to talk about organ transplant or advance in medicine when you can't even deploy interns, when we are going to talk about medicine when COVID, it is LODs who ran the system. <laughs> Maybe, Joe, let me stop there because yeah, I, I, my mind is that. Thing. Thank you. Uh, 
Thank you. Thank you very much, uh, Dr. Mgeni. I, I had a little problem with my uh, with my mic. Yes, uh, that sum, sums it up. That is exactly that situation. You know, we, we shouldn't miss words. It is what it is. And that is why we need to be very cautious how we approach, how we move. And, uh, you know, it's uh, exactly this law needs to be uh, revisited. Um, it is, I think it was passed in bad faith, uh, you know, signed in bad faith. There are many, many lingering questions. And, uh, you know, yes, uh, Prince, we have three minutes and then we uh, should be calling our panelists to, uh, to, 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 to wrap up. Thank you. Over to you. Prince, are you able to unmute? Uh, yes. Thank you, Joe. Hello? Yes, I hear you loud and clear. Please proceed. Thank you. Yeah, I, I said that. Thank you, Stadio. But as the, as, as Dr. was Dr. Mgeni has said, our environment does not favor us to pass that law. Huh? Just because we can't afford to, 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 to make it, okay, to pave the ways up to, to construct good roads. Eh? We can not we cannot understand the the let us say the justice. Eh? How will this be done in Uganda? You know that that law behind that law there is no cost for let me say there is no co there is no cost if someone let me say if someone has been been engaged in a organ that's uh, let 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 me say organ organ napping. Hmm? They may they may not give proper justice, and you know the results that may come up. These people, the MPs, they are just looking at their benefits. They are not looking on the other side of the donor. What will happen physiologically? Eh? And I don't think, according to our dispensaries that they will hold the, the, both the lives of the recipient and the donors. Eh? Joe, let me submit just because of that time. Thank you. Sorry, I... I... <laughs> Hello? Oh, sorry. I was speaking to a closed mic. Oh, I, I apologize. I apologize. Prince, thank you very much for your submission. Yes, I think we were really drawing to a close. Uh, we're having our last speaker, and that is Super Dawn. And then, um, Sarah, we, 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 we'll do the. Uh, we, we, uh, we'll call upon the panelists to summarize. Super Dawn, please, over to you. You have three minutes. Thank you. Yeah. That was uh, since I'm given the opportunity, I will just take it to commend the good job you guys have really uh, initiated of creating awareness about this bill that was passed. And uh, most of the Ugandans didn't give it attention because of the homosexuality bill. However, I, I, I'm a little bit late I joined a little bit late, and I wouldn't want to say much. I would just uh, maybe give back the microphone so I can listen to the rest of the speakers to get more of what is discussed. Thank you. Oh, we are closing up. Uh, Kumri Sarah, please, over to you. Thank you. Uh, thank you very much, uh, Super Don, and everyone else who has given us their uh, brilliant uh, submissions and ideas. And you have indeed opened up so many different avenues this could potentially go. I have made lots of uh, pointers and obviously would be revisiting this from different angles. At this point, I would like to invite, um, uh, should we invite Dr. Serukenya to give us his closing remarks. And after that, we'll have um, 
Dr. Lina Zedriga, I think she's still on. Dr. Selukanya, can you please unmute and give us your closing remarks? Thank you. Okay, thank you so much. So, I thank you for this opportunity. Uh, my last remarks will be on equity and equality. Um, we have a challenge in Uganda. Most of our people are poor. So, this program is quite expensive. If people cannot manage their leases, will they manage organ donation and transplant? I'll give you an example with somebody or a patient with a kidney failure. Um, you know that kidney is very important in the body. It pops in the, I will use a language. Um, it pops in a blood making huh, or formation of blood. There is a hormone called erythropoietin. Where, but when your kidneys are not functioning, you need to make sure that you get that injection so that you don't become an enemy. Two, the kidney helps you to make sure that, that your body is clean. I want everyone to understand me very well. I'm using a language. Whereby you need to go for dialysis. Quality dialysis in Uganda, quality private quality dialysis, 500,000 uh, per session. And you need at least two sessions per week. Just tell me a family which can raise a million in Uganda. For me, I deal with my, my people in the constituency and I've come to prove that any person who is declared having a, a renal problem or renal failure, they always pass on. They don't make it because they cannot afford medication, they cannot afford dialysis, they just die. So, where is equity? Because this be a talks of equity. So, and about, just imagine, uh, there is a patient who qualifies to be the next recipient, but their minister comes in and say, I am dictating you must give the kidney to my son or to my daughter. Is there equity? Then lastly, they only mind about donor suitability, do investigation to make sure that the donor fits to donate, but they don't do investigation to see the risks that the donor will face after donating the organ. So let them not be so these matters and uh, come up with a solution that can save lives. So I want to thank you for the time given to me. Let us continue doing this. Let us continue aware, uh, giving people awareness because people need to be informed. May God bless you so much as I submit. Thank you so much. Uh, can we have um, a deputy spokesperson, Alex Weiss from Fondio, please give us your sub last submission or closing remarks. I, I, I surely want to appreciate you so extremely much for the effort. I can assure you it is not in vain. Um, things that we start uh, small, like you may think we have started, and yet I think this is a real bang for all those who care to listen. There are, very, there are so many talking points. Um, I thought I had, I had labored to be uh, so... Uh, so much with clarity in my uh, deliberations, but I have been swept, astonished by the uh, submissions of Comrade Chris uh, in the U.S. You simply, uh, you simply put it to me out there the way I would have loved. Thank you very much, and I am humbled to have listened to all the brains, negative or positive, that took out the time to come and present their personal opinion. I wish such discourse is respected by other persons who are against such opinions and they listen to the inner man of what we are discussing because we are speaking to the core of humanity and once we talk about humanity, that is religion. You, you know, we have a lot of issues to handle. The, 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 the health system, as you all realize, our doctors are striking, um, and, and all those other things that happen um, uh, associated with the mismanagement 
of uh, of, of the health system. Just like Chris said, um, one person is in charge of everything. He deployed soldiers to do the roads. They deployed soldiers during COVID. They deployed, and and we a country that does not even have its own uh, knowledge of populace is a country that that does not have data on its population. You know what happened when we looked at looking at those who are needy, how would help them out? Even when we had assistance from the United States of 100,000 per household, we could not have the data as, as desired and enlisted by the regulation of the American Congress. So for me, I associate myself to those who think that is not a challenge that we had. This law must be repealed. It must be revisited if we need it because there is no reason as to why we should think of promotion of people donating their organs, and that yet we know they are from a point of disadvantage. You cannot, you cannot uh, avail your 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 person to a to a, to, to a platform of disadvantage uh, when they can easily be hoodwinked that it is a position of advantage. I thank you and thank you, Doctor Edith, uh, the psychologist, for your insights. Um, I am more thrilled that we need to push more and have a pushback on this law. I thank you very much. Sarah, kudos for the organization and Joe. And, and jo. Despite the fact that, Joe, you had just lost your, uh, your dad, being that you've given all the time for this work, may God reward you abundantly uh, by having our country liberated, forgotten my country. People power, our power, NUP, everywhere, and Chagulani is my president, is our president. I thank you. Wow, thank you so much. And uh, I would like to invite a psychologist, uh, Edith, can you please give us your closing remarks? And uh, I do not see Dr. Zedriga. I would have loved to hear from her. But let's hear from uh, Ms. Edith Gochalia. Thank you. Uh, thank you so much, Sarah. Thank you so much, Joe, and the rest of the team that has um, put this together. Thank you so much, everybody that has labored to explain to us uh, some of these things that we probably did not actually understand. My sense are, uh, please involve the persons that will help support you do your jobs better on this act, uh, especially in the deliverables. But I think that Uganda as a country, we are very far from what is required. And I'm... Of course, personally, and I'm wondering whether it's it's so much of importance uh, for us to focus on this and actually make it a law, unless there is something that I don't understand. But uh, in the event that we think it's important, we need to do the right thing, and the right thing is to ensure that the beneficiaries and and the persons involved are actually prioritized and taken care of, and and that we, you know. We do the right thing. Like at the end of the day, let's do the right thing, and and help others to not just you know think that their lives do not matter. There is nothing that um, that works if uh, the if the discussions are done outside of the persons that they affect. If it's not for us, then do not do it for us. Don't discuss for us things which um, pertain to our well-being, pertain to our lives, that you do not involve us. I hope that uh, the persons um, involved, the persons that actually have to take this on, understand the importance of, of this, that it's not for them, but it's for the entire public. And also that when it goes around, you know, as it goes up, it may not necessarily consider them but when it goes down they may be on that operating table and they may need or they may be required to donate and the law that that has been put in place may actually work against them it's a bad thing it's a sad thing but we don't want to get there let's do the right thing thank you so much brilliant thank you and I'll give my final submissions and hand over to Comrade Joe. So um, what I've learned from this session, and I've been noting down a lot of things, uh, that the law, the bill, 
actually lacks a it, it's not people centered it is far from it there is very little emphasis on human beings there's very little emphasis on so many things there's very little emphasis on on safeguarding uh the person the people involved the people basically the product and in this case the product there's very little emphasis on the product sorry for using that word but uh, i'm a marketer that's what i do so anyways um one of the things that I've noted down is uh, that needs to actually be visited is things such as the uh, the psychological, the physical. How does someone operate after having or, or received or donated an organ? Physical fitness, financial support, like uh, we heard from our psychologist. We need to look at the culture, the spiritual, and the social life. And social life, I thought of, say somebody goes on a date, right, right? And uh, tells this person on a first date, hey, guess what? I donated my kidney. I've got one kidney. Could that affect their lifestyle? You know, so uh, there's so much that needs to be looked into and considered. And uh, I would like to hand the mic back to Joe. But I'd like to thank everyone who has been on this space. And I believe this is just the beginning of something huge because there's so many areas that we could actually look at and uh, uh, that have been missed out in this bill thank you so much until next time be nice i hand over to joe thank you thank you thank you very much comrade sarah uh, may i really uh thank you all uh the, the discussions the panelists our uh, listeners guests uh for tonight's attending tonight's uh, Twitter space. Uh, the discussion, of course, was about the uh, organ uh, donor, on organ donation and and transplant uh, bill and or or act for that matter. Sorry, act. So, um, ladies and gentlemen, I think uh, you know many many questions. Uh, some questions have been answered, but there are many many others um, that are lingering. But this is a chance for us to come together. And just like we've indicated, these are serialized discussions. So they will be evolving over time and really delving deeper and deeper and maybe um, viewing in detail different aspects of this bill. Um, as, as we've seen and as we agreed, you know, the, the health infrastructure is not fit for purpose. Um, there is no way the current uh, health infrastructure can support an organ uh, organ donation and, and transplant program. There is absolutely no way. And, we, you know, we are aware that there are no resources. We know the government to date just uh, the, the budget that goes towards uh, the Ministry of Health is just between six and six and six and, 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 and seven percent. Of the of, of the national budget, yet according to the uh, Abuja declaration, a minimum should be around fifteen percent. So we still have a long way to go. So the Ministry of Health is limping, is the system is broken, and uh, it has so many many challenges, uh, such that this is not a priority right now, and there is no way it could sustain this program. So the question is, how will this program be funded? Um, for whom is this program meant? Is it for the common man or is it for some elitist group? Or is it merely a facade for, for, you know, for, 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 for something different that will be happening in our country? So we need to interrogate that. So what needs to be in place? We need good laws, good policies. The laws must be good. The, the, the laws must be right. That is very, very important. Secondly, there must be institutional integrity. We've, uh, we've interrogated the council. How independent is it? If it's, if it's regulatory as well as supervisory, you know, that is a conflict. That is a contradiction there. So that has to be streamlined. There has to be a level of independence. We don't want to hear this order from above or get this organ, give it to that person or remove this organ from that person and give it to this person. We know political interference is part of the uh, the problems that the perennial problems that you know our country is going through. So independence is absolutely needed. And 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 finally, of course, uh, the science must be right, and the science must be also operate in an enabling environment. So we are again back to resources. So yes, whilst the science is is good, whilst we may have the we may have the we may have the 
uh, the expertise, but still even those are areas to look into. So the fact that we commit these experts, all these professionals to this program, it means we, we shall have taken them away from another uh, an, another program. And uh, we know that I think uh, the ratio uh, of, of doctors of, of doctors to patients, uh, I, I don't have the exact number, but, uh, Dr. Sir Kenya will help us, but you know, we still have issues, we're struggling. So, um, the program is good. I mean, let's don't get us wrong. The program is good and is desirable, but maybe this is not the time to really have this program. So a lot of work needs to be done. The law needs to be streamlined. So I did you and I, when I have an accident in, uh, you know, on a border border or whatever, I don't risk, uh, you know, being, uh, being, being, you know, whisked away and my organs removed. Uh, the donors, the recipients need to be protected. And uh, I think we looked into the issue of psychologists and financing. All these uh, issues need to be revisited. Ladies and gentlemen, I cannot thank you enough. Thank you very much uh, for attending this, uh, this very, very important uh, discussion. Um, again, uh, watch the space. We shall be uh, letting you know uh, what is next. But again, the discussion goes on. The discussion has been triggered. Uh, the genie is out of the bottle now. Let's engage. Let's challenge this. Let let's challenge the the, the duty bearers, uh, the, the architect the architects behind this uh, bill. Uh, let's continue to ask tough questions and let's demand answers. But ultimately, I I really I envisage this bill being repealed and being uh be, being being repealed and maybe being uh, revisited. Um, so that all these issues, pertinent issues uh, that we've raised can be addressed. So let's follow one another and uh, we thank you once again for uh, attending tonight's session. Please, we have 30 uh, seconds to follow one another and then we shall call it tonight. Thank you.